Hello, welcome back. Welcome to this new tutorial. Uh, this is called Beetle Race, and the idea is these two beetles race around and they have to eat as many of these fruit salads as they can. It's a two player game and it introduces a new kind of control system. So let's have a look at that. So I'm playing this purple beetle, and you'll see I have to turn and I move forward in the direction I'm facing. It's not like before where you can just move up, down, left and right. First I have to turn and move like that. So it's good for if I'm an animal like this or any top-down game, perhaps racing games would use this system. Now you can see over here on the right the code that I've used. Here I've got left arrow and it's not change X, it's turn by a number of degrees. So you'll find that under motion and I've got turn here 15 degrees so of course I can change that number if I make it something very small like 2 and you'll see how slowly the beetle is turning so 15 is good but it's up to you and obviously the arrow is showing us turning to the left and right arrow key pressed turning to the right and something else new so when up arrow key pressed I'm using this code, move 10 steps, which is actually the first block under motion. This move 10 steps. So that moves me forward. And forward depends on the direction that I'm facing. Whereas before, we'd be using X and Y. So that was X is left and right, Y for up and down. This one depends on the direction I'm facing, which is why I get this effect. Now I haven't put any code for moving backwards because um, I like the game that way, makes it a bit more challenging. It means I have to turn all the way around if I want to go in the other direction. But if you want to add code for moving backwards, I'll leave you to figure out how to do that. But to complete this game, your first job is to program Beetle 2. You'll see Beetle 2 has no code. So Beetle 2 needs the same code, but of course we need to use different keys for moving left, right and up. So perhaps you want to use the A, D and W keys. It's up to you really. So I'll leave you to finish off the code for Beetle 2. Pause the video here. Come back when you've got your Beetle 2 moving. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you've got your Beetle 2 coded and moving. If you had trouble, then you can look at my code here. So I've used W for moving forward 10 steps, D for turning right, and A for turning left. Kind of the classic keys used in gaming for the other player. Um, w, A, D, S if you want to move backwards. So now we've got both these beetles moving around, but they don't have much to do. So a pretty boring game. So let's fix that by having some kind of goal for these beetles. And the goal is going to be eating these fruit salads. So I've got a fruit salad here, we can't even see it. The reason for that is under I, I've unticked show. And there's a reason for that. So I'm gonna actually leave it like that. And then you'll understand why, why we don't show it in the beginning. So first thing, under events, and it's the uh, old green flag again. And then forever. So I'm going to just, just going to wait and I don't want it to be one second or two second every time I'm going to have a random number. So let's say one to three, but you can pick any numbers you like. So forever, it's going to wait between one and three seconds. And after that waiting time, it's going to make a copy of this. So to do that, this is something new for you. Under control, we have right at the bottom this code create clone of myself so a clone is a copy so after one to three seconds it's going to create a copy of itself well let's run and let's see what happens so here's my fruit salad doesn't seem to be much happening but actually if I drag it away you can see lots and lots of copies have been made and another one should be coming back Let's see, is it coming back? Oh, there it is. Oh, they're being made over here. Okay, so we've got lots and lots of copies being made, but 
all at the same place and I don't want to have to drag them to a new place so what we need to do now in the code is to make them appear at random places on the screen so I'm just gonna stop when I press stop all of the clones disappear and I'm left with just my original so we've got all these copies being made but now I want to put them in different places so to do that another new block when I start as a clone so it's kind of like the green flag but for clones for copies so when I start as a clone when I start as a clone I want it to go to a random position so let's go to motion we'll go to X and Y but not these numbers I want the numbers to change every time so that means I'm getting my my random numbers so on the X um, probably around minus 220 up to um, 220 and on the Y uh, Y is let's have a look if I put my cursor down here you can see Y is minus minus 180 that's don't want to go right on the edge so we can say minus 160 up to 160 so let's um, let's run let's see what happens this time okay you can see those clones are appearing and instead of appearing in the same place they're appearing randomly across the screen because of this code they're picking a random position random X and Y position great so I've got the clones appearing again I'm gonna press stop and all the clones disappear and I'm left with with my original just there so they're going to random positions um, well if I, I press play and um, the idea of the game is that these beetles are supposed to race to eat um, so I'm racing over to it but nothing happening I don't have any sprite collision so my next job is to have some sprite collision when the beetles get to the fruit salad and we're just gonna make them disappear so let's press stop so again when I start as a clone we've got this going to a position uh, I can put the code on here as well but to make it clear I think I'll um, drag another when I start as a clone block out so this one is for positioning and this one will be for sprite collision so if you remember about sprite collision of course I want forever then if and I'm going to be sensing so if I'm touching well let's do beetle first so if I'm touching if I'm touching beetle then I'm going to to hide let's uh, oh actually no I'm not going to hide no I don't want to hide let's remove that because I'm a clone let's go back to control I'm actually going to delete this clone so not just hiding but removing the clone completely it's deleted it's gone that's a much much better way so don't hide when you're a clone we want to delete it so I'm gonna get rid of that hide so let's let's have a go let's wait for some um, fruit salads to appear uh, all the way across the screen so I'm heading towards it okay once I reach it then you'll see it's not hiding it's actually being deleted now if I come down here so what's happening here I'm trying to eat this one but I can't why can't I eat that one well that one if I press stop that's my original one and my original one is not a clone so this clone code is not running on my original one and that is why I'm not going to show the original one when I start the game so this one is not shown but when I press play we'll see that fruit salads do start to appear ah of course they're not going to show because this one is hidden so I need to just put that show block there so once a position is picked then it's gonna show let's run and there we go there's the fruit salad showing and come back so yes I can eat these but uh, old beetle 2 is heading for it no beetle 2 cannot eat that's because our code over here was only for beetle this sprite beetle 
So I need to do it for Beetle 2. So quick way, I'm going to right click and duplicate. Let's move that over here. And instead of touching Beetle, we're going to select Beetle 2. Let's just stop and uh, run again. This time I'll play as Beetle 2. And Beetle 2 can also eat. So they can both chase both chase these fruit salads, they can both eat. So looking more like a game. Uh, but something missing. I think we need some kind of a score to see which beetle has eaten the most. So let's think about how we're going to do a score. Let's press stop. So for my score, I'm going to go to, to data. And I need to make, make a couple of variables. So a variable is something that changes. Something that changes in the game might be the score, could be time. So I'm going to call this one Beetle 1. And this is the score for Beetle 1. So I get this block up here. And I'm going to make another one, Beetle 2. So these are my scores for both Beetles. And they're called variables variables because they vary, which means they will change throughout the game. So to begin with, our players are on zero points. So I'm just going to put this under that green flag there. So Beetle 1 is zero and Beetle 2. So when I press the green flag, Beetle 1 and Beetle 2 are set to zero. So when you start a new game, you both start on zero. Then, as we eat these fruit salads, then we're going to change the score. So let's have a look at that. So down here is my sprite collision. If touching beetle, well, yes, I want to delete the clone, but I also want to change. Now, this is beetle one's score. Change by one. So it's going to go up by one. Let's run and have a look at that. Oh, oh, there's one that's closer. Let's head for that. And you see, I've got one point here. So I've eaten one fruit salad. And two, three, and so on. So this way, we actually have a real game going. So it's a race to see who can eat the most. At the moment, it's a pretty unfair game because only the first beetle has this score code. So I need to bring this over to Beetle 2, change Beetle 2 by 1, and uh, let's test again. So let's make sure Beetle 2 is able to eat. Yes, we can see that Beetle 2's score is going up by 1. 1, 2 points, and 3 points. Oh, okay, and also Beetle 1 Yep, Beetle 1's points are changing. So both Beetles can race around, eat these fruit salads, and get points. And when I press the green flag, all the clones disappear, and our points are set back to zero. So we actually have a nice little game going there. Now, possibly one more thing that we could do with this game is to have some kind of a time limit. So they could just run around eating these things forever. But how do we know who wins? We could have a time limit, or we could have the first to ten. So I think I'm going to look at that, the first to ten. So the first beetle to eat ten fruit salads, they're going to be the winner. So how can I do that? Let's go to, to beetle one, and I'm going to be checking the score. So I constantly want to know, have I eaten ten? Have I eaten ten? So I'm going to use the green flag. This is a normal sprite, not a clone. So green flag clicked when the game starts. And of course, as often, forever. So for the whole game, whole game, I'm checking something. I want to know if, if what? Well, I want to know if, if this beetle one variable, if I've reached 10. So how do I do that? Well, under operators, I've got my equals block. So I'm going to put that there. And beetle one on this side. And if beetle 1 equals 10, so if beetle 1 equals 10, well, then I've won. So how do we signal that? Well, I'm just going to make the beetle speak. So under looks, the beetle is going to say, 
I win. Whoops, I, I win. Some exclamation marks there. For two seconds is fine. And that lets, lets the other player know that I've won. And after that, under control, we're going to stop all. No more clones coming. That's the end of the game. So that's for Beetle 1. Now I need this same code on Beetle 2. So I'm just going to click hold, move over to Beetle 2, make sure my mouse pointer is on Beetle 2, let go. Now when you do that, it looks like nothing's happened. But when you click on Beetle 2, you'll see this code has copied itself there. But remember, not with Beetle 1. We want to make sure we are checking Beetle 2's score and Beetle 2 will say I win for two seconds and stop all. So let's test that. Now I'm just going to play with Beetle 1 and hope I can get to 10 points fairly quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, over here, 5 and 6, oh there's one, 7, and eight, oh, all the way up over here. Oh, now sometimes a fruit salad will appear exactly on the spot you are, which is why it looks like you've got a point for free. And ten, so I win, and then everything disappears. So Beetle One is the winner. Beetle Two even got four points without moving. That's because these fruit salads appeared already where Beetle Two is, touching Beetle Two. So got extra points for not even moving. Okay, so there we have. Simple little game. First to ten. Well, you can change that number. Uh, we've learned about different way of moving by turning. We've learned about making a clone, a copy. And we've learned about having some kind of a score with variables. So all really, really useful things if you're making a game. So in the next video, we'll uh, add a few more elements to this game to make it fun. But uh, I suggest making sure you understand those key points, especially about making a clone. And often when you're making a clone, remember, we don't want to see that original sprite. Because that original one is not responding to this code when I start as a clone. So you won't be able to eat it. You could make more code for that, but it's really not necessary. Easiest thing is to hide that, not show that original one. Okay, I hope you've learned a lot there. I'd encourage you to make your own version and practice, practice with these clones, practice making yourself a variable, and I'll see you in the next video.